thank you all for coming and joining us today for the Auricular Medicine Seminar. The content of this series of lectures are designed based on my auricular medicine system, the Huang Li Chun system. There are many different types of systems of auricular medicine out there, such as the European system and the Chinese standardized system. My system has its very unique features. I was given first place of the Lifetime Achievement Award during the 2002 World Auricular Medicine Symposium in Puerto Rico. I was also given the honorable title Mother of Auricular Medicine. I am very happy about that. I would like to present to you eight classes in this lecture series. I started my journey of auricular medicine in 1969. I graduated from the PLA General Hospital University. Originally, I was trained to be a medical doctor specializing in anesthesiology. However, I could not perform anesthesiology procedure because I had broken my right middle finger in an accident. Therefore, in 1969, I turned to studying auricular medicine because I could perform auricular treatment with two fingers and not have to use my broken middle finger. My tragic injury was the turning point that led me to study auricular medicine. I was immediately amazed by how effective it is. It's an art of healing based on Western medical theories, and the points are actually named after anatomical parts. It also offers a very simple way of treatment, so I dove right into it and devoted to the study. I was very impressed when it took only three needles on a year to relieve a severe shoulder periarthritis. It was better than body acupuncture, I thought, so I made up my mind at the time to study auricular medicine and only auricular medicine. The president of the hospital gave me an opportunity to follow a mentor. During my one year studying with the mentor, I followed him around in his clinical practice as well as in his lectures. Through the training, I learned how to practice, diagnose, treat patients, and give lectures in auricular medicine. I worked for the 301 Military Hospital for nearly 38 years. In 1993, I was sent to Cuba and provided TCM training to the local practitioners. Then, in 1995, I came to the United States. And since then, I have given numerous lectures of auricular medicine at many universities and symposiums. And that was how I started my teaching career uh, in the United States. And in 1995, I also founded the Auricular Medicine International Research and Training Center. And since then, I have been lecturing in AAOM conferences, state association conferences, Santa Monica, Santa Fe, Houston, Northern California, Southern California, Arizona, and many other places. I also gave a lecture in Orlando and Miami, Florida. So my system became more and more complete through the process I created the detailed lecture notes for the eight class series. My eight class series corresponds to the lecture notes that I have written. However, I'm constantly changing and adding more information from my clinical research and experience to my lectures. So there is always something new that I put into my material. Through my years of lecturing and practicing, I wrote many books and some are translated into Spanish, Portuguese, some in traditional Chinese, and some in simplified Chinese. And that's why, uh, the, that's what, that's the difference between the Taiwanese practitioners and the practitioners in China. So besides the eight lecture notes for the seminar series, I have two clinical reference books. I have a diagnosis book with color photos for visual diagnosis. So in total, I have written 22 books so far, and they're great references. 
Besides giving lectures, I also see many patients throughout my career. In fact, I also include demonstrations when I go out to lecture. In addition of sharing the theory of auricular medicine, I also show my audience how to diagnose and treat with auricular medicine. I'm very pleased to share this complete systematic lecture series with you. So I became a mentor and a professor for the PhD program in a university in 1997. I was awarded the national expert status and enjoyed the special benefits and fundings directly from the government. So these you see here are my certificates. So I stood out among five candidates who was competing, who were competing for the honor of um, the Lifetime Achievement Award. So in, 19, in uh, 2002, in the symposium in Puerto Rico, I received first place. I presented three research papers and did three demonstrations. And then I was regarded highly and then given the title Mother of Auricular Medicine. My system was also ranked number one in the world for auricular medicine. In 1994, I was part of a large visiting medical team to the United States. At the time, I was serving at the 301 Military Hospital, which was the largest hospital of the system. In this picture here, I was doing a demonstration in front of Mrs. Perry, who was the wife of the Prime Minister and the President of the hospital. After the demonstration, I also gave Mrs. Perry an auricular diagnosis. She was really amazed on how much I could diagnose from just examining a tiny ear. So with my expertise, I was granted the green card in the United States only within 35 days after my arrival. People from the White House were very amazed by our team from the 301 Military Hospital, and especially after my demonstration. Here is a silver medal that I received from the President of Italy, Giulio Andreotti. So back in 1992, he was sick when he was on a trip to China. When he got out of the flight, he requested the Chinese health department to send the best doctor to his hotel. The health department kept his symptoms and conditions confidential. They were afraid that releasing the information would attract unwanted media attention. So among all the hospitals in the nation, the health department contacted the 301 military hospital where I served. The hospital was quite troubled about which specialist to send out since we don't know we didn't know anything about the health condition. And I thought that it was hard to find an expert who could perform diagnosis as well as provide a treatment. And it is not practical to bring all the equipments to the president's hotel. So therefore, they decided to send me because I had a portable compact detector machine. So I could use this device to detect the health condition of the whole body and locate what areas are troubled. So they picked me, and besides me, the hospital also sent the best Qigong practitioner, and we went together. When we met President Andreotti, we only had to interpret it, well, we had to rely on the interpreter because we did not speak Italian. But I was still able to diagnose his condition with my machine, little machine. So I determined that his discomfort was occipital headache at the right side, and his occipital headache came from large auricular nerve and lesser occipital nerve compression from C3, C4 hypertrophy. No one in Milan, Italy was able to give such precise diagnosis. Within five minutes, I was able to give him a definite diagnosis. 
he was shocked and then asked if I could、um, help him with this. And I replied, "Of course." So I used the simplest method. I put seeds in the three points of the neck triangle. I used the neck triangle because it can treat all kinds of neck pain, shoulder pain, and occipital headache. The neck triangle works for the entire cervical vertebrae. So the entire triangle is made out of C1, C2, C6, C7, and large auricular nerve. So we can use this triangle for diagnosis as well as for treatment of neck disorders. It can open up the channels and relieve the C3, 4 compression on the large auricular nerve and the lesser occipital nerve. It is a great point. Actually, these points together are great points to use, and I use them very frequently. So anyway, his occipital headache was gone on the spot, and he was blown away by the wonderful treatment effect. He said that all these years in Milan, no one could provide such great relief for his headache immediately, but I was able to take it away. So he then asked if I could go to Italy with him, and then train their practitioners. I nicely had to turn down his request because I was serving in the military hospital at the time. But I told him that Italy is welcome to send their practitioners here to China for training. So when I returned to Beijing last year,、uh, there were students still coming from Milan to learn auricular medicine. The in appreciation for my service, President Andreotti awarded me the precious silver medal, with the symbol of Rome on one side, as you can see on the screen. And on the other side of the medal was his signature. He had only brought five silver medals with him on this trip to China. I still remember that three of the medals were given to the leaders of China: Li Xiannian, Zhao Ziyang, and Hu Yaobang. The remaining two were given to me and Doctor Liang, the Qigong practitioner. So the governor, governor of foreign affair, was quite bit surprised and jealous. He said to us that out of the medals that were given to the leaders of the country, which were expected, but we should be very privileged to receive the last two. And plus, he said your clinical skills were exceptional. That's why. So I was humbled and gave all the credit to the greatness of auricular medicine. You can see in this story how I alleviated the cervical disorder in one treatment without using a single needle. I was able to correctly diagnose the year, gave the treatment with ear seeds, two seeds per point, and also auricular massage. I will describe all this later on in the lecture. Not today, but towards the later middle and later of the auricular series. So the treatment was not only effective but also painless. Through my years of teaching and practice. I have treated many important presidents and important governors. This here in the picture is the previous leader of China, Jiang Zemin. I had diagnosed and treated him. I had treated his wife five times. She has severe case of autonomic autonomic nervous functional disorder and was under the care of the 301 Military Hospital. And there was no suitable medicine for her condition. So. It was in 1992 when I was asked to treat her. I only treated her five times, and dramatically, she was improved to a point where she could start traveling abroad. So, in this picture, you can see that I was still pretty young. When I was young, I had an opportunity to go to Cuba on a government funding to promote Chinese medicine. Therefore, I led a group of military doctors to Cuba for the mission. I was the leader of the medical team. So when we arrived in Cuba, their Department of Defense came to greet us. The Secretary of Defense asked what my name was, and I told him Huang Li Chun. So as you can imagine, they had a little hard time pronouncing it. So when our medical team arrived in Cuba. The receptionist seemed surprised to see a female military doctor. They were even more surprised and in awe to find out that I was the leader of the medical team. Some even became a little hesitant to speak to me. 
So the Secretary of Defense told me that I reminded him of the character in the 1960s movie about a Mexican civil revolution, Juana Gallo. She was the main character and the heroine of the country. So he said that since Juana pronounced very similarly to my last name Huang, he suggested that I take on this Spanish name, Juana. So I was quite famous in the Cuban military. They even made a special badge with the name Juana imprinted on it. So the military people knew me as Juana, and I treated many soldiers over there. I also visited their navy base and provided consultation and treatments. They separated patients by gender at the navy base, and I had many postgraduate students and a translator on the team. We went in 1993 and had the honor to meet the Cuban president in 1994. So we provided great resources to the medical system of Cuba. The improvements were shown in their clinics, administration, and the practical training departments. We also shared knowledge of herbal medicines as well as did many case studies. In the end. I was awarded a medal of military friendship. I always wore my military uniform in Cuba. I was ranked senior colonel, but the uniform gave to me was for colonel rank. During my term in Cuba, I always wore military uniform. Our medical team established great reputation for the military. My work and expertise were trusted and highly respected by the Department of Defense and the Health Department. Therefore, I was granted special privilege to travel and teach all over the world. I once went to South Korea to lecture and returned right on schedule according to the duration, so I had no issue applying for a trip to the United States. And you know, it's difficult back then to come here. But after I came to the United States, I received my green card in 35 days. Initially, I wasn't planning to stay in the U.S. However, I felt the high respect of me and my work when I was here, so I decided to take the acupuncture board exam, and I passed it. I took it in May and got it, got the license in August. I didn't plan and I didn't plan to stay in the U.S., but everything just fell into place. I feel that I'm very fortunate to build my career in the United States. In China, I was appointed as a national expert by the council. Internationally, I stood out. I stood out from five renowned experts and received first place of life achievement award. Auricular medicine allow us to expand our scope of practice. This photo here was taken in Cuba, where Chairman Jiang met our team. I was here looking very young and very energetic. It was February fourth of nineteen ninety four. I also met the president of Cuba, Fidel Castro, and he is actually the same age as Jiang Zemin. When he was young, you can see he was tall, handsome, and likes to wear his military outfit all the time. I had the honor to meet him in person. I was awarded a medal of friendship and contribu contribution to the medical field. I thought it was quite an honor. I was given the honor to receive the award under the national anthem. So Fidel Castro was the president then here in the picture, and next to him was Raúl Castro, which is the current president of Cuba. And in the picture here, you could see that there is his wife. The prime minister's wife and the commander in chief, standing next to me, was a senior research scholar, and the head of department of intelligence. We had the honor to meet the president before our return to China. You probably saw some of these teachers here in the picture, in Southern California schools. These pictures are postgraduate training, PhD programs. I have been teaching to PhD students at five branches universities for four years. Throughout the years, we had trained and built up many PhD students. 
PhD programs of Portland and Miami also sought for my teaching for their postgraduate training programs. It is hard to find expert, ment expert mentors in China because many of them have moved to other countries. Students with special permission will be able to follow me in their clinic as internship. Once I had a Caucasian student from San Francisco who knows Chinese language very well. She followed me in Alabama close to a month, I would say. She later shared her she later shared with me that her practice had grown tremendously incorporating auricular medicine and that she was really busy. Many of her classmates express, express interest in asking me to speak to them at the San Francisco area. I nicely replied that my schedule is very full. So now I would like to share how I entered the field of auricular medicine and became so devoted to it. Auricular medicine is a very modern healing method of the 21st century. It is a complete system integrating Eastern medicine, Western medicine, and natural science. We have designed the eight lecture series to share auricular medicine systematically. It is a complete system of medicine and is more than just one therapeutic method. There is solid theoretical foundations here. And so if you ask yourself, what makes up the theories and the foundations? Is there a channel or organ relationship? Auricular medicine is mainly based on modern medical theories. This is why auricular medicine is widely accepted by TCM practitioners as well as Western medical doctors. I have been to many major conferences of Western medicine. My system was also evaluated by many Western medicine groups. This is why I stood out from the five experts receiving the Lifetime Award. I hold the advantage of having surgical training background and therefore, auricular medicine incorporated a great deal of modern medical theory as well as TCM theory. It is an integrative medicine that blends Western medicine, Eastern medicine, and natural medicine. Again, it is an integrative system. It can be used to diagnose and treat the diseases of the whole body. This is why I say that auricular medicine is the latest system of natural medicine of the century. I oversee two groups in Taiwan. The first group is based at the Veteran General Hospital in Kaohsiung, and members are all medical doctors. Many medical doctors follow me around for many years to all my lectures. The other group is mainly formed by TCM practitioners and based in Ming Chuan University. I have students who are medical doctors as well as TCM practitioners. I also have some students who are massage therapists. So I have lectured in Russia, South America, Brazil, North America, Europe, and other countries like Portugal and Southeast Asia. I have spread auricular medicine to many, many places in the world. We establish the auricular medicine, we established the auricular medicine international research center in Brazil. The study of my auricular medicine system and my system only, the Huang Li Chun system. So many of them completed the eight class seminar series. This is an interesting in, this is interesting in South America where medical doctors and Chinese medicine practitioners don't get along with each other. There was a group of 600 medical doctors who uh, was attending my lecture. There were about 180 TCM practitioners who were also attending the lecture series. Almost all students completed the eight class series. They also established a large research group in Latin America. And there are also research centers in Singapore and Hong Kong. One of my strongest supporter group is based in Taiwan. I also received great help from eLotus to arrange these seminars here and events. 
I have known Tina and Lotus Institute for such a long time, and we built a very strong relationship. She also learned a lot from the courses and became one of my best disciples. Though she is often very busy with work, she still manages to see quite a few patients with auricular medicine. So I have many students around the world. In Taiwan, I have a fan club of close to 300 people. These are 300 foreigners for it is a close group not allowing Chinese people to join. These fans will follow me to places like Beijing for my lectures. For instance, I just spent in Beijing Industrial Development Department. I had a student named Mary Tsai in Houston who studied, for, who studied with me in 1995, and whenever I lecture in Texas, she would always come. She also went to the International Auricular Medicine Conference twice. In fact, she will be going to the upcoming conference with me. I am very pleased to have them join the conference with me. These elite students are very devoted to the, fo to, to the study of auricular medicine and to follow me. They call themselves the superfans and not just regular followers. I am very happy to have disciples like them. When students first start learning auricular medicine, it often takes some time and effort to digest and understand the information. Repeating the class is very helpful to gain better understanding of auricular medicine. So, I would like you to watch these videos again and again to have a deeper understanding. Once you get through the gateway, you can expand and deepen your understanding. I have been practicing since 1969. I still focus on practicing auricular medicine and no other methods or modalities. I rarely do body acupuncture. If I do incorporate acupuncture in rare occasions, I will use only a few needles, mainly for placebo purposes. Maybe just a few points for energy and balance. However, I put the diagnostic and treatment focus on auricular medicine. Acupuncture is just supplementing. Some may feel the treatment is oversimplified if we do auricular medicine without adding any body points. In reality, acu auricular medicine already can get the job done. I have designed the A-class seminar series on auricular medicine. Class 1 and 2 lay out the foundations. Today's class is Class 1, Day 1, and is packed with valuable information. This here is the lecture notes for Class 1. The lecture notes corresponds to the two-day seminar. So Class 1 has two days and have prepared many pictures and tables in lecture notes, these color lecture notes. This is just as important the information in class 1 as in any other classes. This class provides you practical information you can right away use. Some may naively think that they can start teaching auricular medicine just listening to my class 1 lecture. Frankly, I tell you, there's a whole lot more to learning class 1 and it's just the beginning. Class 2 is very essential in studying auricular medicine. We will broadcast it at another time. You must learn the location of the auricular points. Point locations are so important, and they can vary from system to system, year to year. Just which system offer the most accurate diagnosis and most effective treatment? The French? The Chinese? How do you determine the correct point location and how many research do you have to back them up? I spend a lot of time and effort defining the point location and categorizing the points. I also classified the auricular features such as specific points, areas, grooves, lines, channels, axes, circles, and triangles. So the details will be covered in class 3. The complete series will train you on how to diagnose and treat with auricular medicine. Step by step, the classes are training you to be true masters of auricular medicine. After the 8-class auricular master series, there are four more advanced courses which will take you to become an expert in auricular medicine. The advanced courses will illustrate diagnostic skills, treatment methods, and the functions and mechanisms of auricular medicine. We will explore why by stimulating a point on the ear will create effect on targeted organ. It is a complex mechanism involving neurotransmitters, biochemistry, immunology, endocrinology, and histology. 
we had done extensive research and pathological and physiological perspective. We carefully documented the mechanism of regular medicine and effects of different protocols. As a good researcher and practitioner, we not only had to ask for treatment effect, but also solid scientific proof and research to back it up. However, conducting such large scope of practice may not be as easy here in the U.S. as it is in China. Nonetheless, we should still preserve in mind and seek the truth. I have created the eight class series of auricular master training and four advanced training courses. We will go over the material of class one today. I'll be giving you an introduction on auricular medicine. I will be going through the history and development of auricular medicine. Do you know how many system of auricular medicine are there in the world? Tina just came back from a conference and there were a lot of people talking about auricular medicine. However, is the system easy to learn? Does it offer easy to follow treatment protocol with reliable and repeatable therapeutic effects? Which system do you know? Many practitioners are studying and researching auricular medicine. The conference Tina went to spoke mostly about the European auricular system. So mostly the French. This system does not possess good diagnostic value in my opinion. Its theory is mainly based on the relationship between needling auricular points and the change in pulses. The reflex loop links the heart and the ear. Not having a good diagnostic method is the shortcoming of this system. They do not offer a comprehensive treatment system as well. Therefore, allow me to tell you why you should study my Huang Li Chun auricular system. This is a system that is different from the Chinese international standard system. The Chinese international standardized system only has 90 auricular points. 90 points are not enough. Auricular medicine is based on collection of many, many points. When you address the right point correctly, your diagnosis and treatment will then be effective. I have students who follow me since 1990s. I can't stress how important point theory is in auricular medicine. In today's lecture, I will do comparison among different systems. I will also talk about visual diagnosis in auricular medicine. You can diagnose many diseases by visually inspecting the ears. You can diagnose the patient first before reviewing their chart and medical history. Just how and why can we diagnose diseases just by looking at the ear? A few words can sum it up. I like to say the ears can talk. Ears have their own language and way of expressing themselves. Diseases can create discoloration, deformity, papules, disquamation, and vascular dilations on the ear. What kind of deformities should you be looking for? Hypertrophic kind, like tumors, will cause nodules or create nodules or convex kind of deformities. Concave deformities, on the other hand, represent deficient conditions such as missing teeth, hypotension, arterial sclerosis, cerebral anemia, and poor peripheral circulation. From the grooves on the earlobe, we can diagnose conditions like low blood pressure, arrhythmia, or coronary heart disease. We can also diagnose tinnitus and hearing impairment. We can even determine if a person is missing upper or lower wisdom teeth. You can tell without having the patients open their mouth. It's all written on the ear. I find that many elderly develop mental fogging, imbalanced gait, memory loss, or Alzheimer's disease. These symptoms and diseases are often associated with cerebral arteriosclerosis and poor circulation of the vertebral vesicular artery. So I study many cases and discover the groove of cerebral arteriosclerosis on the ear. We can also examine the helix to determine the condition of the microcirculation. We can examine conditions of the blood pressure, cerebral artery, 
cardiovascular system, and microcirculation through the auricular visual inspection. Now we will go over the details regarding visual inspection in uh, class 5, not now. So in class 5, we'll explore the languages of the year. What we will do now is we will establish the foundations for diagnosis. Therefore, in the third part of today's lecture, I will talk about the visual diagnosis on the year. Once you learn the basic rules of visual diagnosis, you can apply it here in your practice right away. Patient will be amazed on how you can diagnose their condition without asking any questions. You can apply your newly learned knowledge tomorrow. When time permits, we will do some demonstration as well. So I would like to show you how to diagnose with the auricular with auricular medicine, my system. You can diagnose many conditions of the present and the past. You can see the disease history of the patient. You can also predict the prognosis and determine if there are any hereditary disease factors. Many gene-related diseases show indications on the ear. Auricular medicine is a fairly simple method to use. I never take the pulse of the patients. I may look at the tongue, but I never take the pulse. We can diagnose over 200 diseases with auricular medicine alone. Can pulse diagnosis identify over 200 diseases? That is not possible. Hemorrhoids, for example. A practitioner may take a long time feeling the pulse to give the diagnosis of hemorrhoid, if they can. But a common, but a practitioner may take 10 or 20 minutes, maybe, to even reach that diagnosis. But 9 out of people, 9 out of 10 people have hemorrhoids. The practitioner may take another half an hour feeling the pulse and diagnose ovariances. Many people out there have they had their ovaries removed. In modern society, many young ladies are using birth controls. Many of them end up developing ovariances. I'll show you on the picture today how you can diagnose that. Very easy. We can offer reliable diagnosis through inspecting auricular points. Years will record present major problems and reveal hereditary disease factors. We can predict diseases about to take place in the past medical history too. Years record our complete health condition. It is like a thick fire of your medical history. In my eyes, years are no longer just years. It is a medical history file of a patient. The more you study the year, the more you would discover the treasures in auricular medicine. We can di diagnose many, many diseases from the years. In class 5, I will talk about visual inspection and how the years can talk. People have mixed opinions and feelings, feeling the same patient's pulse. However, my students can easily feel the deformities I found through palpating their ear. Pulse diagnosis is very subjective. So, besides visual inspection and palpation diagnosis, I also developed auricular electrical diagnosis. Auricular electric diagnosis is performed with our detection device. We can use the compact device to detect change of electrical resistance. When an organ or a body part has issue, electrical resistance will be lowered by 10 to 15 times at its reference auricular point. Therefore, the machine will sound when the probe traces through these points. The lower the resistance, the stronger the current, and the sound will be louder. Through the amplifier of the machine, severe diseases will trigger loud and strong sound feedbacks. High pitch and loud sound feedback will help us diagnose a disease. When the point does not trigger by any sound or feedback, we consider it to be a negative reaction and the point reference is healthy. We can diagnose many conditions using the compact point detector. We can use it to detect major health issues, past medical history, and family history. In class 6, we will devote the whole entire class to auricular electrical diagnosis. So here is the compact point detector I was talking about. The device comes with wires and testing probes. 
The compact device can help us detect the past, the present, and future conditions of the patient. So, I highly, obtaining, I highly advise you to obtain one of these devices. Justin is one of my very good students in the United States, calls this device the Chinese MRI. He used this device and correctly diagnosed the patient who went through three months of medical examination without receiving a definite diagnosis. I was in San Jose and the Bay Area not too long ago. There are many employees of electrical industry in the area, engineers and computer science people. Some of the engineers earn a very good living and then they go into studying Chinese medicine after retirement. It's very funny how that is. So anyway, there were five engineering experts who came to my lecture in the Bay Area. So they learned a lot from my lecture and suggested that I should speak for the United Nations. Though I'm ready, though I am already lecturing at many countries around the world, they still recommended that I seek out a chance to speak to the UN people. They really look up to me, even though some of them went through the initiation, and even some of them went through the initiation ceremony and became my official disciples. They are really a bright group of people. We will talk about auricular diagnosis, electrical diagnosis in class 6. In class 7, we'll talk about treatment with auricular medicine. We'll go over how to treat patients and what methods to use. In addition to auricular seeds, we'll also cover auricular bleeding therapy, auricular massage, and other manipulation techniques. Class 8 will focus on the principles of achieving optimal effects. We need to learn how to correctly diagnose the patient, use the most suitable treatment method, and generate optimal treatment effects. Generating the best treatment effect is the most important subject. When I practice auricular medicine, I usually begin by asking questions or reviewing the chart and medical history of the patient. I don't ask what tests were done or ask other questions. I don't want to stereotype from patients telling me what diseases they were diagnosed. I want to make my own diagnosis. I need, to be, I need to be very carefully when examining the patients. For instance, we need to pay extra caution when detecting cancer in patients. I won't start the session by asking questions. Regardless of what I say or what they say, I only believe in what shows on the year. The year will speak for the person and record everything about the person. History is all on the year. I don't care what the chart says. I was simply diagnosed according to reactions of the years. Auricular medicine also provides treatment without inserting a single needle. There is no need to add on drugs, herbs, or vitamins either. We may incorporate some manual therapy to stimulate the years. Auricular medicine has advantage that it is accepted by anyone, whether they are children or adults. It is safe and effective and is a great way to diagnose your patient and treat your patients. So let me give you a brief history of um, auricular medicine here. What is the origin of auricular medicine? Why did the French claim to be the founder of auricular medicine? I object their claim for auricular medicine because I think it originated in ancient China. Our Chinese ancestors invented auricular, medi me auricular medicine, or acupuncture, which gradually evolved into auricular medicine. Auricular medicine finally developed to a mature art of healing in the 1990s. It was developed and expanded from auricular acupuncture. 
The earliest documents of auricular acupuncture was found in the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic. In other words, it has a history of over 3,000 years. By inspecting the condition of the ear, one knows whether the individual has an illness or not. All the 12 channels and 365 collaterals enter the ear. It records the relationship between the ear and meridians and organs. So let's take a look at this picture. It was, quote, it was a quote I grasped from the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classics in 1987. I was studying the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classics and found the very early records of auricular acupuncture. So I found this quote. By inspecting the conditions of the ear, one knows whether the individual has an illness or not. Another translation goes like this. One's years reflect one's health. This proves our ancestors diagnosed health conditions by looking at the years. However, no specific diseases were documented. They learned to observe the vital energy and circulation of qi and blood from the years. But they did not learn how to diagnose specific diseases with the years. Yet they had discovered the strong connection between the years and kidney. In the classics of Ling Su here, it says, all the 12 channels and 365 collaterals enter the year. So, year is the place where channels merge together. The 12 yang channels enter the year. The 12 yin channels don't enter the year directly, but it will merge with the yang channels at the neck. The 8 extraordinary channels are also connected to the years. When there is an obstruction at the channel, the reference will show up on the ear. It cor corresponds to the TCM saying, when there is an obstruction, there will be pain. When there is no obstruction, there will be no pain. We need to carefully detect the auricular point before treating pain conditions with auricular medicine. In channel theory, pain is often caused by obstruction. What causes pain and how does Western medicine look at it? It is often considered an issue with circulation. Bad circulation results in poor metabolism of lactic acid. Lactic acid accumulation will irritate the nerve endings. A series of symptoms and changes like swelling, inflammation, and deformity will then take place. This is the root cause of pain. In the past, we learned how to unblock the channels with acupuncture. Presently, we can use the detoxifying approach with auricular medicine. Detox is pretty modern and fancy term. Some may use food and other therapies to detox the skin or blood. Some suggest that drinking alkaline water or juicing is a great way, are great ways to detoxify. Auricular medicine can also help eliminate the acids and keep the body alkaline. It is important that we utilize the auricular bleeding method in this case. Oftentimes, pain will be gone right away after you bleed. I would also incorporate the shake, rub, push, pull, drag, manipulation methods. Not a single needle used. Acupuncture needle, that is. I simply bleed the ear with the lancet needle. TCM puts a lot of emphasis on channel theory. However, so far there is no proof of what channels or where channels really are. Many researchers are being many researches are being done, but none can determine what channels really are. However, structural changes can be observed easily on the ear. We can also apply treatment accordingly. How can we understand TCM theories from Western medical perspectives? How can you explain why lung governs the skin and kidney has ears as its orifices? Hmm. I had done a lot of research on these subjects. So among the 12 channels, all six yang channels enter the year. The six yin channels don't enter the year directly. However, they will merge with the yang channels at the neck and then go up to the ears. Ears are the origins of many channels. Therefore, massaging the ears often will activate the channels and collaterals. Blood vessels, lymphatic passages, and channels 
are densely distributed here and can be stimulated by massage. So here is like the point of the spring. Quan in Chinese means water source for the spring. So like a Jing well source area. Many nerves, such as the cranial nerves, come out from here and govern the whole body. Therefore, I propose that the idea, the idea that ears are like the origin of a spring or river. Left ear references the heart, while the right ear references the kidney. In the end, it comes down to yin and yang. Treating ears can treating the ear can strengthen the senses, benefit the heart and shen, tonify liver blood. Correct major deficiencies and nourishes in and the kidney water. This is the gateway of the in. Heaven, earth, and mankind are the three governing elements. Heaven element is represented by Du Twenty on the human body. Mankind element is represented by Ren Twelve. Earth element is by Kidney One. Therefore, through the years, we can treat all the diseases from head to toe. Oracles have many functions. Auricular medicine works so well because of the pro brain proximity theory. Brain proximity theory explains it better than TCM channel theory. In class three, I will talk about auricular point of nervous system. We will be studying auricular point functions through perspectives of physiology, pathology, anatomy. Pathomorphology, immunology, and other medical theories. So, the earliest record of auricular therapy was found in Yellow Emperor's classics. It was the Xiao Zhen, which is small needles, out of the nine needles that were used for the years. The small needle method is also known. As the marvelous needle for the year. From 1969 through 1977, auricular points are mainly stimulated with acupuncture needles. However, I always felt needling the patient's ear would cause unnecessary discomfort and pain. I was asked to treat very powerful governors at Zhongnanhai before, or in China, very powerful people. And it's very challenging to treat these VIP patients, but not having to. Cause any discomfort, so it, essentially, I had to treat them, but not cause any pain. So I stopped using needles. I used to take many tiny needles during each treatment. However, it was hard to manage the direction of needle insertion when tapping it in. So I switched to auricular C therapy. At the very beginning, practitioners would use mung bean to create the stimulation. Green beans. They would cut the mung bean in half. Which was quite laughable comparing to the modern method. Yet at the time, mung bean was the most suitable option. Practitioners had then since tried many material for C therapy. They try huang jing zi, lai fu zi, as well as patent tea peels like qi tong wan, ren dan, liu sheng wan, all sorts of different seeds. And in the end, they found that wang bu liu xing, the vaccaria seeds, were the best. Had the smooth surface, appropriate hardness, and does not sprout easily after soaking with water. So, you can further fry or treat these seeds to make sure that they don't sprout. Therefore, you can have peace of mind using them. And I actually invented a board that makes four small seeds per square of tape. I designed the board with four dents on each square for the seeds. For instance, when treating the whole gallbladder area, I just had to apply one tape with four seeds on them. It creates a diamond shape, making the treatment a lot faster and effective. Some ask why I don't use magnetic ear pellets. Magnetic ear pellets tend to be too small and too sharp. I feel you may encounter swelling in the ear, such as the heart area and the kidney area. So magnetic ear pellets can easily punch through the skin and entrap upon compression. So it is then very hard to retrieve, even with tweezers. It can be quite dangerous at times. Most manufacturers make the ear pellets very small and not having very strong magnetic force. The magnetic force need to be over 
1,500 gauze before creating any therapeutic effect. I did a research with Professor Pan at the Site uh, Physics Department, Institute of Technology. We found that the magnetic ear pellets are so weak that it does not create any working mag magnetic field or polar. So vicarious seed is a much better choice and it is far less expensive. Magnetic pellets may look more professional, but they have a high risk of causing adver adversity. In the past, needling is mainly a therapy for years. It could be quite painful. So I had five needles inserted on my ear daily for five days. I could not stand it by the sixth day. My, my ear was having too many little tiny holes. They were old-fashioned coal with lots of air sacs. Air sacs. It caused a lot of damage and discomfort to the ear. Patient would clench their teeth during treatment, wanting the pain to get better by suffering more pain. So to save my patients from putting up with the pain during treatment, we later invented the auricular C therapy. So this is how the method, treatment method evolved. Moxibustion is a good method we still use today. We may apply the mox on the ear and then on the facial area. And it is very good for facial numbness and facial paralysis. The point connect to facial nerves, vagus nerve, and glossopharyngeal nerve. So addressing this point will stimulate the facial nerve effectively and improve the condition. And by this point, I mean the ear. Okay, and Sanjiao on the ear is specifically best for facial disorders. Facial nerve also branch out from the back of the ear, and this is why facial neuralgia often comes with pain on the posterior ear root and occipital area. Recently, I saw a patient with Lu Yao. I diagnosed the patient to have facial spasms. I also determined that he was having tightness at the occipital area. I was confirmed by the patient that that was the problem or where the problem originated, so I recommended the patient to massage the ear more often. There are many branches of the facial nerve on the posterior ear. The Sanjiao point can affect the facial nerve, vagus nerve, and the glossopharyngeal nerve. By massaging the ear, they will be warm like they are next to a bonfire. This practice also improves facial beauty, massaging the ear. The upward lifting motion will help stimulate the facial muscles. It can reduce wrinkles and prevent double chin from developing. However, only use very light force when bringing the hands down in a downward motion. This is a very useful technique. We may apply moxibustion to the ears. The candle therapy is another therapy originating from the Mediterranean region. That is very popular now. It works by lightening up a hollow candle and place it over the ear canal. So it's the ear, uh, ear, ear candle therapy. A small piece of dough is then used as seal to open and create a vacuum. All the dirt and waste will be sucked out of the ear canal. This method is also good to correct retracted eardrum. We utilize this method quite often in the practice. So I found moxibustion to be a very good method for body acupuncture points as well as auricular points. Question: Do you find moxa and ear candle method to offer similar treatment effect? It is similar but I would still prefer moxibustion. It is because moxibustion offers a good heat therapy as well as effect from the mugwort. This is why I prefer moxibustion. Ear candle therapy mainly exercises the vacuum mechanism. So if a patient comes in with hearing issue after long hours of flight, the candle method will work great for that case. With two rounds of candle therapy, the eardrum can return back to normal. So the blocked ear from flying will be uh, fine. I went to Portugal once, which required transferring four times 
after getting up and down the fly so many times, I could not hear what I was saying because my ears were so plugged. Immediately, I asked my assistant to perform treatment on me. 